Hey there, Zoo to you fans. Welcome back to Franklin Park Zoo. This is Zookeeper Selena signing in after a long hiatus to Zoo to you to talk to you about a very special birthday girl that we have here in the tropical forest today. Zoo to you has done a lot of different animals, but today we're doing a new one: cotton top tamarind. So you can see these guys having a little enrichment right now. It is going to be Wilma's birthday tomorrow. She'll be 17 years old, so this is perfect timing. We have a very specially delicious treat. They're getting a little bit of strawberry, some apple, some romaine lettuce butts with mealworms buried in the leaves, and a couple cherry tomatoes. And these guys love fruit, so they're going hog wild on it. And we've built, whoop, a bird went over. They got a little startled. So here at Franklin Park Zoo, we have actually five cotton top tamarinds. You're only seeing three right now. The ones in front of you, right by the lettuce butt, is Wilma right now. You can tell Wilma because she has a short tail. And up close, you can see she has a little bit of a scrunchy old lady face. Her face is very creased and wrinkled. The one who's attacking the apple right now is Bam Bam. That's their daughter. She'll be five in October. The tam Oop, she's working really hard to get it off the kebab, but I don't think it's going to work. She'll just settle for the bugs. Bam Bam is the youngest in this group right here. You can tell her because she's a little more heavy set. She's got her full tail, um, and she is definitely the most food motivated. She is the most willing to train, the most willing to come down. Uh, her name is Bam Bam uh, because this group is named after the Flintstones, uh, even though Bam Bam is a male in the Flintstones. Our Bam Bam is female. And then, of course, the patriarch over here spitting apple onto the ground is Fred. Fred is much skinnier than the rest. You can see he's got much uh, more defined cheekbones. And up close, he actually has a little beauty mark right above his eyebrow, which it's not so easy to see from the public area, but you can always tell him because he's a little skinnier. The cotton tops are so named for a very obvious reason, which I'm sure we can all guess. They're crazy hair that some people attribute to Albert Einstein, but it's just cotton top. Maybe Albert stole it from them. They love fruit. These guys live in the wilds of Colombia. They're extremely endangered. So they're only found in Colombia and here at Franklin Park. And if you're our neighbors up in the north, they are also found at Stone Zoo. So we have a pretty big population here at Franklin Park and Stone, Zoo New England as a collective. I don't know how many individuals are at Stone, but like I said earlier, here at Franklin Park, we have five. We've got these three. And then if you ever go over in the tropical forest to where we keep our sloth, she has two roommates, which are two daughters from this group. Primates as a whole are very political. They have family issues every once in a while. So we decided it was best to split up the two daughters and let them have their own space. And they're doing very well. Cotton tops are pretty small and pretty cute. It's hard to see from this perspective since you're not here, but they're about the size of my forearm. They're very short. They are very funny. Uh, they have a lot of personality. I think people mostly just like their hair, but they do have a lot of personality. Wilma is very suspicious. She's a mom many times over. She's had a bunch of kids, raised a bunch of kids, done a great job. Uh, when the keepers enter this exhibit to service it, she's usually the most reserved, the least willing to come over. She wants to suss it out first. Bam Bam, like I said, very adventurous, willing to come right up. Perhaps the best trainer in this group. And then Fred's a dad. I don't know really what more to say about him. He's relaxed. He chills out in the background. He loves raisins. In the wild, these animals would be eating bugs. They'd be eating fruits, little berries, plants. They're considered seed dispersers, which a couple of the animals here at Franklin Park and in the tropical forest are seed dispersers. That just means that they eat a lot of fruit. And as they travel through the forest, they release those seeds back into the wild by pooping all over the place. So it happens here, too. Tamarind poop is very stinky and very pervasive. So for those kids out there, watch your shoes if you're in Colombia. So we have a question here from Linda. Where do the animals go during the night zoo lights? OK, so the Tropical Forest Building is closed during Boston Lights. We don't have guests coming into this space proper. These animals have a nest box you can see over here on the right side of the exhibit. It's actually made out of PVC, but it's been torched to look a little more naturalistic. And a lot of times when we come in, even especially in the winter hours when it gets dark early, if you come into this exhibit around 5 p.m., all three of their little faces will be poking out of that log that's hanging up in the back. That's their little bed space. So these animals don't have a behind the scenes space per se. Most animals at the zoo do have a barn or a space where they go at night. These guys hang out right here on the exhibit. 
But like I said, this building, Tropical Forest, is closed during Boston Light, so you'll not be able to catch the tamarins on your trip to visit the lanterns. What different types of enrichment do the hot tamarins get? Great question. So for these guys, they're very food motivated. Like I said, they love fruit. So right now what they're getting is we call these kebabs. We do this for a lot of animals. This is a good way to exhibit the natural behavior of foraging. So foraging is when an animal walks around and looks for different fruits, plants, food matter. The kebabs add an extra element because they kind of swing. So if you can imagine these animals are up in trees all day, they'd be grabbing branches, pulling branches down to them, pulling fruit down to them. So the bob sort of gives them that natural swing that they have to work against, put a little resistance into. At the zoo, the animals have a pretty easy life. They have free health care, they have great food and housekeeping staff 24-7. So enrichment is a great way for us to get them to work a little bit more, especially for their food. And you can see other things in this exhibit. You see there's a little bottle hanging from the tree that's got their bugs. Like I said, these guys are insectivores, they eat bugs. And so every day they get a mix of mealworms, waxworms, and crickets. The waxworms are their favorite. Waxworms are very soft, velvety white grubs, um, full of fat, yummy, delicious. Everybody loves waxworms. Uh, the mealworms, I guess, would be their second favorite. But like I said, they're fruit mongers. They really love fruit. What would be their main threats down in their natural habitat? The biggest problem for the cotton top tamarind in Colombia right now is actually deforestation. So just like here in the U.S. and around the world, forests across the earth are being cut down to make room for people or businesses. And these animals obviously live up in the treetops, so they need a lot of forest space. They also are occasionally taken for the pet trade. They're very cute, but I've already spoken about their disgustingly stinky poop, and so I would 100% recommend do not get a cotton top tamarind or any primate as a, as a pet. These animals do not make good pets. Um, but luckily here at Franklin Park Zoo, we've partnered with an organization in Colombia called Proyecto Titi, which is the organization that works on the preservation of these animals. So they are based in Colombia, they have educators, researchers, field workers, and they have all different methods of trying to preserve these animals. One of the most important parts is education. So just by coming to Franklin Park Zoo or Stone Zoo, you are participating in Proyecto TT. We support them as part of our conservation initiatives. So thank you for joining us. We're gonna shout out a happy birthday to Wilma. Wilma. Let's get her close up. She's right in the middle. She's having a birthday strawberry. Happy birthday to you, the big one, seven, 17 years old. These animals only used to live to about to 13. So like I said, it's a good life at the zoo. Bam Bam will be five in October, so hopefully we'll be celebrating her then. But until then, Wilma, shout out to you. Happy birthday. And thank you all for joining us on Zoo to You. This is Zookeeper Selena in the Tropical Forest. Join us next time.